any way forward here? How do you? Th I mean, how does it look, feel to you at the moment? Well, it feels to me like leaders are going to have to step up to the plate. Obviously, the negotiators get somewhat stuck. The ministers come in. They haven't got it unstuck yet. So the question is whether leaders can rise to the occasion and everybody give the bit which will be needed to get a strong statement out of this. But with your lengthy experience of these sort of events, although I'm not sure there's any event that's ever quite been like this, do you sense there's a deal there at the moment? I think it's a little way yet, but if I put myself back to my past life, would I want to come to a conference and go away with nothing? No, I wouldn't. And I would hope there's very few leaders who would want to come and then see something just evaporate. When you put your prestige on the line to come to a conference, you expect an outcome. But it will require leadership to get that outcome. That's very interesting what you say, because that makes it sound like, well, look, frankly, on issues, everyone's miles apart. It's just that we can't afford to fail because it will look so bad for Obama, Brown, whoever else is in town. The stakes are high. No one wants to be associated with a failure. And think about it. Copenhagen was supposed to be the conference where the treaty was signed off. We now know we can't get all the details for a treaty, but we could get a strong enough statement to negotiate one next year. If I were a leader going home, that's what I'd want to be able to say to my people. So you get a strong political statement, but isn't the danger that if it's not precise enough, that people will try to reopen various bits of the negotiation at a later date and it just drags on and on forever. I think the leaders have got to be very clear with their negotiators so that the negotiators don't have room to renege next year. That's why the more precise the statement can be, the more hope we've got of getting what we want next year, which is the legally binding treaty. How, do you, how would you say this has been run so far? I mean, we're, I mean, you laugh at the question. <laughs> you know, I, I've been to a lot of uh, high-level conferences. Uh, someone described this one to me as WTO meets Woodstock. It's got all the characteristics <laughs> of a major NGO convention and then this very high-level conference. So it's a unique atmosphere that's created. Yeah, but when you get the resignation of the president of the conference three days out, which apparently was procedural, apparently everyone knew about it, except hardly anyone I've spoken to did know about it. What one has to assume it's uh, it's preordained because of it lifting up to the high, the high well, it level. It looks pretty rubbish, doesn't it? Well, what I learned about media over a long period of time is never surprise them. Uh, if it's going to happen, you know, let people in on the secret. But uh, there we are. But they didn't do that, and that's again meant that the focus today has been on the, the process of getting there rather than about the substance. And what we want is substance because there are some encouraging things happening behind the scenes. The work on the saving the forest, the badge I've got here, that's very advanced and so we're very excited about that. The work on the technology transfer issues is well advanced. So maybe if, if we all just focus on the things that have gone well and narrow down the gaps to very specific issues rather than going around the same old circles again, that would be helpful. But it does seem that this time round that the developing world, the island nation, the island states are pretty kind of clear about what they're going to accept, what they're not going to accept, and they're not just going to accept the crumbs from the table that the developed world, Europe and the United States will give them. No, and nor should they accept crumbs from the table. I've been saying ever since I walked into this job as administrator that unless it's a deal for development, there ain't going to be a deal. Developing countries are not historically the major cause of the mess the climate's in. So to come to the party, they need some support. Actually, for adaptation, they need it now. This is not some abstract problem which might affect them in 30, 40 years' time. It's happening now. Helen Clark, very good to talk to you. Love the description of the World Trade Organization meets Woodstock without the drugs. Well, maybe I just haven't seen them. Anyway, uh, back to you in the studio. John, goodness me. <laughs> oh, it's 17 minutes past four. Let's